angry guy here. And today we're discussing why women must be blamed for the destruction of men and society. Today we're discussing why women must be blamed for the destruction of men and society. What am I talking about, guys? What am I talking about? We all know it. We've all seen it. We've all borne witness to it. The fact that men are no longer approaching women. The fact that men are walking away from Western society, dating, marriage, responsibility, duty, and choosing to live peaceful lives, going as far as leaving the West and going overseas to find better prospects. And this is a direct response to feminism and to the modern day woman. And of course, women don't take any accountability for anything. But guys, winter is here. We have women that are furious, shocked and furious, saying that men want the princess treatment now because they are no longer approaching women. They are no longer making the first move. They're in complete shock and disarray. But then they're also making it very clear that they're not going to respond. They don't care. If they don't care, then why would they be complaining? All they know how to do is shame men. Now, don't get me wrong. There are the chameleons also that are trying to turn it around and say that, oh, we're pro guy. We're pro man. These girls over here, they're terrible. And I've always been for men, you know, but they, they try to call me a pick me. But in reality, you know, I'm a pro dude. Really, bro? Where were you in college? You have purple hair and this is what you're saying. Oh, let, let me just go ahead and dye that there. I'm going to ruin that again, bro. You are not a conservative woman. You've never been a conservative woman. The writing is on the wall. You knew what you were doing was wrong back when you were doing it. And now you're just trying to switch it up and change it up. Guys, the relationship, the breakdown of the relationship has to be thrown at the feet of women. The breakdown of the family has to be thrown at the feet of women. The single motherhood situation that we have, single motherhood culture has to be thrown at the feet of women, all right? This epidemic of fatherlessness in Western society, especially in the United States, has to be thrown at the feet of women. The fact that more than half of all the men incarcerated in prison right now come from fatherless homes, it has to be thrown at the feet of women. The rates at which women are choosing to end their pregnancies, especially among African-American women, has to be thrown at the feet of women. Young men choosing to opt out of higher education and drop out of society, that has to be thrown at the feet of women. Simp culture, that has to be thrown at the feet of women. OF, only fools, and the rise of women who believe that o only fools is a sustainable way of doing things and a future. And then when things don't work out for them and they can no longer find boyfriends or get a job because employers don't want to hire them and guys don't want to be seen with them, throw it all at their feet. The fact that so many guys have been deleting themselves for the last two decades, throw it at their feet. It is imperative that they are held accountable for everything. And when I say held accountable, you don't have to say that, oh, you know, you're going to face the consequences. The consequence in and of itself is the destruction of society. And of course, they're going to try to blame the men for everything, for the things that they chose to do and the decisions that they made, calling themselves victims. Feminism will have to be thrown at their feet. 
because many of them will try to opt out of that as well and try to act like, oh, I wasn't a part of it. And by the way, guys, if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications to never miss another video again, and like the video because it tells YouTube that you're enjoying the content, you want to see more of it, so YouTube will show you more of it. But guys, I said this years ago, many years ago, I called it. I said years ago that women, when the question came up, and it will inevitably come up, are you a feminist? Women are going to respond, Femma what? Femma who? Femma, Femma, Femma. Is that a new song? Is that a new dance? Did you mean FEMA camp? I've heard of those places. They're terrible. I don't want to go there. For those of you that have followed me for close to a decade now, you'll remember I said this. There was someone who pointed out that years ago I talked about the Fempocalypse and that it was on the way. Don't forget that come 20, 20, is it 2029 or 2030? I think it's 2030, which is only, and we're only, we're less than, we're less than, uh, we're less than seven years away from that at this point. Come 2030. 45% of all women between the ages of 25 and 44 will be childless and single. Just let that sit in for, let that sink in for a moment. That's a lot of single women. That's a lot of childless women. And those are only the women between the ages of 25 and 44. We're not talking about the women who are 45 through 60. It's going to be devastating. And there will be tent cities. This whole UBI nonsense, universal basic income, unless you're handing out checks for $5,000 a month, many women won't be able to survive. You're like, okay, angry, you're being a little delusional there. $5,000? You can't live on $5,000 in some places a month. All right. You're like, I mean, you can try, but when you go to like certain places, $5,000 a month, you want to rent an apartment in New York City for $5,000 a month. Get the heck out of here. Are there some people that pull it off? Sure. They literally live in broom closets and they're the ones who got lucky for the average person. Nah. No. You have people that have are renting an apartment, there are three rooms and they're each they're each forking over $2,500 a month. And that place was a steal in Brooklyn. Jeez. I'm telling you guys, it is devastating. This whole UBI thing is a joke. All right? Even giving out $1,000 a month isn't going to do anything. Most of these women will just use it to buy food, and it won't even be enough to cover their food budget because they don't cook. So it won't even be able to cover all their Uber, their DoorDash. And the irony is that women say things like, when it comes to only fools, they like to say, well, it's not our fault. It's because there are men who want to purchase the content while we make the content. So it's men to blame for this. It, it's kind of crazy, guys, because, you know, it's like saying that don't be, blame the person who makes the illicit content, who makes the thing that 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 devastates communities and destroys the lives of people. Blame the people who buy it. Now, don't get me wrong. You have to hold the people who use the stuff accountable. But to say that the people who are selling it should not be held accountable because they are victims. And that's another thing. Victim culture. You have to throw that at the feet of women too. Every single bit of this that has happened in society today. All right. The destruction of society. The destruction of men. The destruction of masculinity. The destruction of Christianity. The destruction of morality, the rise of immorality, all of it, throw it at the feet of women. 
feminism. That was their invention. Throw it at the feet of women. That's all you, boo. M2, the M2 movement. Throw it at the feet of women. The reason why men are becoming passport bros, throw it at the feet of women. Men walking away, throw it at the feet of women. All of it. Give it all to them. They have to be held accountable for it. And what does it do? They will have to face those consequences and let them and box them in. Box them in entirely. All right? Let their sins box them in. Where they can't turn to anyone and say, I, you know, oh, it's this or that. No, 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 it's you. You made these decisions, ladies. And if they try to run and, you know, jump into these other spaces, because a lot of them are invading the matosphere right now, you've got a lot of sims welcoming, welcoming them. They need to be called out as chameleons, and they will show themselves immediately. You know how a chameleon shows herself? Because the moment you crit you criticize her, she'll come at you. Don't you dare attack me, all right? How dare you, you loser, you I-N-C-E-L, you misogynist. That's the same feminist rhetoric, bro. The same feminist rhetoric. So their feminists will come right out on the surface. Or who hurt you? Who hurt you? Someone clearly hurt you because you wouldn't be saying these things if you weren't hurt. And I hope one day you'll meet someone who will help you to heal because we're not all like that. And that's how they try to discredit you. They try to discredit you, discredit your, discredit your points because they try to say that only a hurt person would say these things, regardless if they're rooted in facts or not. And what does that really say about them? Because what that truly suggests is that they know, they believe that if a man is with a woman, his head had become so screwed up that he can no longer, no longer be reasonable and speak out on the injustices that women have created in society. That's what they believe. Because because basically, when you have a woman, it's like having a master. And that master is ruling over you and, and, and being critical of you and working to silence you at every, every given turn. As men, we need to wake up and we need to see what women have done in society. And we need to hold them accountable for the things that they do and the things that they say. Men can't do this anymore. It's a, men have had enough. We've had decades of this crap. Absolute decades. And it has to come to an end now. Men are exhausted. And that's why men, why the average man has, is walking away. But all of it, the devastation, the pain, the suffering, the loss of, the, the loss of so many guys, guys like Robin Williams, Jason David Frank, Stephen Boss, all of that. They have to 3D to throw every bit of it at the feet of women. All right? And say, no, you guys did this. And if they say, I didn't do this, I didn't participate, I was just trying to live my life, I didn't do anything wrong, listen to me. You went around and you collected the spoils of feminism. When the feminists were out, all right, destroying the lives of men, Destroying men in society and stealing whatever they could, pillaging and plundering. You all put your hands out and you collected and shared in the spoils. And now you don't want to share in the sentence. You don't want to share in the consequences. All right. Because y'all got your rewards, but you don't want to, but you don't want to face the punishments. All right. You got your rewards, but you don't want your punishment. You don't want to face the consequences because it was theft. It was theft. It was all illicit gains. And now it's coming back to haunt you. All right? Y'all dealt in stolen, in stolen goods and stolen wear. You lined your pockets with, with, with stolen products. All right? With money that wasn't yours. And you were all complicit in it and boasting about it. And now you're going to try to run away from it. Like I said, guys, you will ask women, are you a feminist? They will say, is that a new song? Is that a new dance? All right. 
Fema Fema Fema. Did you mean FIBA camp? I've heard of those places. I don't want to go there. They're terrible. I don't know. I've I've always been more of a girly girl. You know, I love Jesus riding ponies and be and being fit, feminine, and friendly. A whole bunch of BS. She can't cook. She can't clean. She's covered in makeup, fake up. And her voice sounds kind of deep. Because that's one thing that you notice about a lot of women who are not feminine. They have this very, they have a, their voices are quite, a, are, are a lot deeper the way that they speak. Women who are feminine speak softer. You know how I can point this out? There are two sisters, Brittany Pettibone and her sister. Brittany, Brittany tries to be feminine, but Brittany is kind of like a tomboy. And I'm not attacking Brittany. I like Brittany. I, I've gotten along with Brittany over the years. She's a pretty decent person. I, 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 I have no gripes with her. But you can observe her sister. They're identical twins. And her sister, she and her sister are like night and day. If you listen to the way that her sister speaks, her sister speaks very, very soft. It's a completely different way of speaking. And those are signs of a feminine woman. Even the way that they look, even the way that their faces look, Brittany has like a more of a hardened look, while her sister has a softer look. And they're identical twins. And you can spot the difference pretty darn quickly. We have to wake up and we have to realize that women need to be held accountable. And the only way to hold them accountable is not by punishing them. Their punishment is, their, is facing the consequences of what they've done and the fact that men are walking away and society is, is falling apart. And that they are going to be the ones who ultimately face the consequences for that. Because without men, there is no society. You know, a, a society without its men, a country without its men is basically is basically a wasteland because it's open for invaders. And trust me, the invaders will come. Women tearing down men. Attacking masculinity, calling it toxic, saying that they're being harassed because guys are staring at them at the gym. When in many cases, it's absolute lies. Creating a world where men can no longer make mistakes. Because that's the only way you learn how to, you know, get along with women. Is to actually interact with them, but if you are constantly in a situation where it's your, you know, it's if she likes you, it's cool. If she doesn't, it's harassment. Then guys are going to avoid it. Women are complaining that guys don't make the first move anymore, and guys have been told for years, no means no, and even yes can mean no. Check that out, guys. No means no, and even yes can mean no. That's where they started coming up with this thing called affirmative consent, where just her saying yes is not sufficient. All right? They started coming up with enthusiastic consent. If she was not enthusiastic when she said yes, then clearly it was not consensual. But what if she was enthusiastic when she said yes? What if we could even show you video evidence showing that she was enthusiastic when she said yes? Well, it doesn't matter. You clearly missed something. And then they wonder why men are done, done, da, done, done, done. But it doesn't matter anymore. This is not talking about right and wrong. This is talking about we have to throw it all at their feet. Everything that has fall that's happening around us, the destruction of society, destruction of destruction of a nuclear family, destruction of the male spirit, okay? 304 culture, all of it. You know, when girls say that, oh, I'm going through my whole phase, every bit of it. 
all right? The rise of OF, all of it. We have to throw it all at their feet, everything, and let it sit there. And then walk away. What do you guys think regarding this? Because that's the only way that we will ever have true social change. Not by changing laws. Because they'll they'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to change these laws. Nothing ever changes. No. By walking away. Throwing it all at their feet. Walking away. And staying away. I've already said this. The future is literally guys going overseas for dates. Guys will be in America, in Western, Western countries, the UK, whatever. And they will work. Australia, guys in Australia have been doing this for years, for years when it comes to like Thailand, for example. But the, the future, the future, and this is, this is, it's, like I said, trends become normalities, normalities become traditions. And right now we're heading towards the password bros will become a normality and eventually it will become a tradition. But it's heading towards becoming a normality. What will ultimately happen now? And, it, and when these things happen, they happen rapidly, just like suddenly, like, OK, yep, now like we're switching over. That's it. And what will happen is you're going to see the guys going overseas just for dates. So a guy's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I met this girl. I, you know, we're going to be going on a couple. We're going to be going on a date. So and so, yeah, she's in Dominican Republic. We're going to get we're going to get together, spend to spend some time together next month. Like, guys are, this is how it's going to work. Guys are no longer going to date American women. All right? And women are going to watch this beginning to happen where guys are literally going to stop dating American women and they're going to go overseas, not to even just marry and find a wife. No, 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 no. That's, those are things that can happen 10, 10 years, even 20 years. If men, if they choose to even marry, because a lot of guys will no longer marry. But we're talking about dates. We're talking about young men. We're talking about 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, guys in their 20s. They won't be dating girls at college. You'll have a lot of, and guys, I, I, I called it. I said, this is going to go. You're going to see little boys, 13-year-old boys, all right, meeting some little Slavic girl online. And they're like, they become pen pals and, you know, they go, they do, they Skype and they talk to each other after school and everything. And the parents get to know one another, you know, check each other out to make sure they're legit. And, you know, you're going to have these little boys saying that, oh, dad, I want to go see Sarah. You know, I want to go over to, I want to go over to Slovenia or whatever other little crap country in Europe there is to see my little, to see my girlfriend. And dad and mom are going to have to figure out how to balance the budget so that they can send, bring their kid over for the summer or while they're on spring break or whatever, or holiday break to go see their little girlfriends. That's really what's going to happen. And when it comes to grown men, you know, I'm talking about guys in their 20s because, because for a guy in his 20s, you have no chance of dating in Western society. You have zero chance, all right? Because they look at you as that you're young, dumb, and broke, all right? And what's ultimately going to happen is that you're going to have all these young guys that are still working on themselves, but they want to have relationships. They're going to go over to the Dominican Republic. They're going to go to other countries in South America. They're going to go to Europe. They're going to go to the Philippines. They're going to go to Thailand. All right. And when they go over there, they're going to go on dates over there and they're going to meet women over there. You're going to have guys literally just traveling around the world when they want to hook, when they want to see their girlfriends. And in many cases, when they want to see their wives. Because a lot of guys by that point will know, don't bring her back. Because within every woman, there is a seed. The feminist seed is in every woman. Every woman has the feminist seed in her. The only difference is that in Western society, that seed has been given, it has been given water, it's been given sunlight, it's been, it's been, it's been taken care of, it's been nurtured, and it's been allowed to grow and flourish. But in other countries, that does not happen because there's no public assistance, there's no welfare, there's no government handouts. So these societies could not go in that direction. There's no overabundance. If you don't have a man, you can't survive. 
or you're going to have to work your butt off for every single thing. And there's no government to bail you out. There's no child support to bail you out. These guys are barely making enough money to, to, to survive. So you need to think again. You need to really think it over. That's the truth. That's what's really happening right now with a lot of these women. And of course, they don't want to admit to it. They don't want to own up to it. But this is the reality that they've created for themselves. And like I said, there's no one coming to rescue them. And that's what we're going to see. We're going to see guys. Guys who are in their, are in their 20s is going to really change them. They're going to take more pride in themselves. And a lot of and one of the keys is to get the INCEL guys to get these guys to get them back on their feet because that's really going to devastate women in Western society because they've demoralized these men so much into believing that they have no value and that they are so unattractive that no woman would want them when these poor young men don't realize that all they have to do is go outside of their country and there are women who are fit, feminine, and friendly and that are literally, will literally go, I will take you. I find you extremely attractive. Let me tell you all about Thailand. Women in Thailand are extremely attracted to white guys. That's not to say they don't like black guys, but they are extremely attracted to white guys. Now, you might wonder, why is this? Oh, it's because of all the money that they have, right? Mm. Money is a part of it. But in, in Thailand, a lot of the Thailand Thai, women in Thailand are genuinely physically attracted to white guys. They love white guys over there. A lot of it is because of the way that they look. Believe it or not, and it's hard for a lot of people to comprehend this, when you go to another country, you're exotic. If you are white or you're... If you are white or you are black in another country, in Southeast Asia or South America, you look exotic to these people because they don't have those traits. For example, in Thailand, their noses are different. And when they see a white guy, they look at their nose and they're like, oh my gosh, I love your nose because it's so different. They don't have that over there. They don't have that. So they say, oh, I want a child. I want a kid with this guy because I want my children to have those traits. You have someone who's darker skinned and she's like, I want your skin tone. I want your skin tone. I want my children to have your skin tone. Guys, some of you don't know this. In Japan, there were there's a group of women. Some of the black guys will tell you about this. There are a group of women in Japan that like designer babies. All right. I've known about this for years and they will target black guys and foreign guys, but they target black guys because they want to have children that look different, that look exotic, because in a country where everyone looks exactly the same. When you have children that stand out, regardless of whether the Japanese will accept them or not, they don't care. Because their child will now look different and it will open more opportunities for them. And by it opening more opportunities for their children, it'll also open more opportunities for their parents. Think about it. People like diversity as long as it's not forced upon them. So you're going to have these guys that were shamed in Western society and told that they had no value and that nobody wanted them and all this other garbage. And they're going to walk into other countries and there are going to be women who genuinely want them and are attracted to them. Let me let me make another give you another example. You'll see a you'll see a fat guy walking around with some beautiful girl, beautiful woman in Thailand or in the Philippines. Right. Overweight guy, maybe a little bit older. 
and he's walking around with this beautiful woman in the Philippines, right? Or in Thailand or in South America, Dominican Republic. And everyone's like, oh, she's only with him for the money. There's no way that she could physically find him attractive. But guys, that doesn't make any sense. One, women are more, women are, don't get me wrong, they like Chads and Tyrones, but women, to be very clear, are they, pri they prioritize different things. For example, they prioritize if a guy is a protector and a provider more than based on the looks of a guy, believe it or not. All right? That's typical female nature. But, and again, there's a big but there. There's more, it's, there's more to it than just that. If you look at women in America, a woman who can a woman can a lot of overweight women have no problem finding men. Not only do they have no problem finding men, they have no finding they have no problem finding men who want to marry them. There are women right now, and there are a ton of thirsty dudes in their DMs that are basically begging to take them out on dates and spend their money on them. I remember watching a video recently where this guy was talking about it, that a, a woman who is a three has the same access to men that a man who is a 10 has access to women. Woman who is a three. All right. A woman who is a three has the same access to men that a man who is a Hollywood star, an A-lister, has to women. That's how crazy it is. Because one, men will hook up with just about anything, although they're fighting, women are fighting now that these are just hookups. It's literally rec recreational use only. And if they if they think that they can hold out and basically say, "Oh, I'm not doing it. I, I I'm 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 uh you know I'm I'm just gonna stop being with guys unless they marry me." <laughs> good luck, to, good luck. And the the crazy thing is, a lot of these guys that are high value guys, they're going they're already they're already going overseas. And as they watch other men go overseas, they're just gonna follow the trend as well because they're not gonna risk their happiness and their wealth and their peace. When they have all this money and they can just walk away at any given moment, charter a flight, go to another country, live it up, and then come back. And they can do this every week. Heck, they can do it on a daily basis, some of them. You heard me right. A daily basis. Daily. They can fly to another country every day if they felt like it. Women don't realize they have priced themselves out. And then on top of pricing themselves out, they've made themselves so undesirable that men no longer want them. They are not fit. They are not feminine. They are not friendly. They were not raised to be wise. They do not have the qualities to be wise. Femininity is much more difficult to instill into a woman than masculinity is to instill into a man. Because you can teach a man how to be a man. And with the exception of some sims, you can work with guys. Women, on the other hand, you know, after a certain point, for example, after they've hooked up with a certain number of dudes, you know, they can no longer pair bond. And after they have adapted to certain behaviors, you know, Cooking and cleaning, those things don't come natural to them. Not only do they not come natural to them, but these are things that they don't want to do. Because it's something that, one, they look down upon it. Women in Western society, they look down upon cooking and cleaning, which is now one of the reasons why I finally understand this thing. I heard it, heard it recently, and I completely understand it. All right? And other guys are beginning to understand it. You know, there's a saying, marry the cleaner, marry the cook. And now, and some of you guys are listening, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, now I get that too. Marry the cleaner, marry the cook. Hmm. Everything that's happened has to be tossed at the feet of these women, regardless of whether or not 
They take responsibility for it. It does not matter. It doesn't matter if they take responsibility. They won't. It doesn't matter. Toss it at their feet and walk away. And they will be left to face the consequences all on their own. Because when men stop talking, when discussions stop, and a lot of guys aren't talking anymore, and women don't realize it, that the guys aren't talking to you anymore. They're not negotiating. It's non-negotiable. They have nothing to say to you. And as they witness this, as this befalls them, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before the weeping and the moaning begins. And like I said, many of them will turn to Jesus while others uh, will just start deleting and it won't mean anything to us. And it's going, and guys, there was this guy who wrote this thing years ago. I've been looking for it, where he basically predicted that, you know, over the fall, over the coming decade, and this was written like 10 years ago or maybe a little more. He predicted that over the coming decade, you know, society would look at the, the terrible condition and wonder how women ended up in the terrible condition that they're currently in. That's, you know, that's what's his prediction of the future after feminism, after feminism. And, you know, women think that they're more empowered than ever today. And they don't, they don't realize that they've lost everything. You know, I have a video coming out for you guys where this woman talks about how she, she's, you know, someone asks, ask her, how much money is in your bank account? Like, you know, these street interviews guys like go around and, you know, they ask questions and they ask this chick, how much money is in your bank account? And she said, oh, let me check right now. And she pulls out her phone and she says $150,000. And he said, and the guy was in literal shock because it was a younger woman. And he said, what do you do for a living? You know? And she says, oh, I sell used underwear on this specific platform. And she tells us the name of the platform where she sells her used underwear. And she said, the least I've made in a month is $50,000. And these are the same types of women that think that the men who purchase that stuff on these platforms are high value men. Any man that would pay for you, for a woman's used underwear has something wrong with him. A guy that would pay 50000 that would pay, well, correction, that would pay hundreds or thousands of dollars for a pair of used underwear. Those guys, let's make that very clear, clearly have some mental illness. There's something very wrong with them. But of course, women in society are okay with it because they're benefiting from it. These are not high value men. All right. These are the kinds of guys that your parents tell you to avoid. If you had a good father in your life, he would never let you go out with this type of creep. Because he knows that he, he you he very well may never see you again. Well, today we discussed why women must, and I will repeat again, all right. Why women must be blamed for destruction of men and society. Women chose this path. They chose to walk this path. And now they have to live with the consequences of those decisions. I want to hear what you guys have to say regarding this. Because I truly believe that it's we're only we're only at the very beginning of it right now. But we're going to begin witnessing the harsh reality that women will face. And we're going to have a large number of women in places like tent cities, a large number of women that are going to be ending up destitute, a large women, number of women that are going to be living below the poverty line because most women retire at the age of 58. That's the average. The average age of retirement for a woman is age 58. Most women can no longer continue working past that. They all think that they're going to be boss babes. And every woman seems to think that she can be a boss babe when, she, when they don't seem to remember that most businesses will fail within their first year. And the vast majority of all companies will shut down within five years. 
Business is difficult, but they're all going to be boss babes and they're all going to be successful. You know how many of these women who thought this went out and took out loans to become boss babes and then they end up bankrupt? And they want a man to come and bail them out from the bad decisions that they made because they think that they thought that they could handle the risk. A lot of guys have lost their shirts multiple times in their lives. Guys, I've lost my shirt multiple times in my life. I have lost my shirt multiple times on bad investments, man. And what, you know, and what does it do? It's it's a part of life. It's because we assume the risk and we also assume the consequences. And there are a lot of you guys right now that are listening. Some of you are wealthy guys. Some of you are guys who make hundreds of thousands of dollars or you have a net worth over a million dollars. But that didn't just manifest. You guys have gone through a lot. You've struggled through a lot. Some of you had have had to overcome some extraordinary hardships to get to where you are right now. And you failed so many times. So many times, which is the reason why you will never allow some woman to come in and take away what you worked so hard to build. And women don't realize this because they don't see the fight that men have to put up. They just see the finished product and then they want it. They want to come and take it from you. And they're going to be furious that they can't get it anymore because the men won't give it up. They won't even have a conversation with them. Heck, they won't even look them in the eye. They'll act like they don't even see them. Because women are becoming invisible, not invincible, invisible to most men in society today. The only, the only people that will even talk to them are the simps. And a lot of the simps are afraid of them. They're still simping. That's why they're on... You know, they're buying stuff from them on OF, but they'll never approach them or having, having a realistic relationship with them. In fact, a lot of the, these simps don't even want to have a physical relationship with a woman. I know it sounds crazy to you. I know it sounds crazy, although it's not so crazy. There are a lot of guys that when they actually have to have a physical relationship with a woman, right? And they experience a physical relationship, they'll turn around and go, Yeah, I prefer, I prefer my uh I prefer the hub. I prefer the hub. You guys know what I mean by the hub. They're like, Yeah, I prefer the hub. You know, I can find what I like on there, get what I like, and uh just enjoy myself. They're like, guys, this is a, it's a, we don't talk about it in society today. That while you know the hub is an addiction, we don't acknowledge that a lot of guys prefer the hub over being physical with a woman there's some people like who would ever choose be you know choose the hub over being able to have a physical connection with a woman a lot of guys a lot of men today because i mean men who have never been physical with a woman won't understand this and guys who've been with a lot of women will know that it takes work you actually have to physically connect with someone. It doesn't matter if she's your wife or she's your prostitute. You have to still make it, you still have to have a physical connection with her. And that takes work. Versus being able to go and chill on the hub and wrap this thing up in, in on there a minute. And it's I'm not even joking. A lot of guys, you know, they, they're like, okay, well, I'm gonna jump on the hub. All right, let's get this done because I've got other things to do. I've got to go and do laundry. You know, I've got to balance my budget. You know, I've got to get a little bit of work, get a little bit of work in today because you know I'm slacking, slacking off. I've got to head to the gym, so let's get this done. Let's get. And a lot of guys will jump on the hub. They'll get it done in with within a minute, within less than a minute. All right. They'll back their fist, flick their wrist, and then they're done. And they'll and they'll move on with their day. And guys, there's nothing like the post nut clarity. Nothing like post nut clarity. Because once you have that nut off, everything changes. And you're like, yeah. I would never even give the time of day to the girls in that video that just helped me with that nut. That's how a lot of guys are. Women don't realize what they have lost. I've already said this, guys. If if an artificial womb ever came along, it would be the end for these for these for for women, because it would be like it would be a whole different age. 
because and women women and feminist groups would literally rally against it and demand that it be banned and the only person that are allowed to use it are women and the craziest thing is that you know when it comes to like for example you know women might say well without us you can't have you don't have access to eggs because we're the ones with the eggs and that's incorrect i don't know if you know this guys but recently scientists literally created an embryo just using uh, just just use just using stem cells an entire embryo a number of years ago scientists discovered that they can take i believe it was skin cells or and they can basically transform them into virtually any other type of cell so for example they can transform them into sperm and they can also transfer them into eggs so this might sound insane to you guys but two guys with an artificial womb, not even theoretically, you know, this is based in fact and reality, can have a baby. Even today, without even today, without an artificial womb, you can take a, you can take cells from a from one guy, cells from another guy, turn those cells. You know, turn one group of cells into the sperm, into a sperm. Another group of cells from the other guy into a into an egg. You can combine them in a pastry dish, and then implant them into a uterus, and two guys can have a baby together. Now, if you eliminate the uterus, the need to use a uterus, and you have an artificial womb, then men would completely opt out of even getting eggs from a woman. I mean, literally, you'd have guys going on websites and checking out other dudes like, okay, uh, this guy's really handsome. I like I like his hair. I'm going to look at his family, his family's history. Men would no longer, men would not even try to have children with women, to even look to women to, for eggs, all right? They wouldn't. They would get artificial eggs, all right, eggs that are artificially created, all right? They would give a sample of their, this is exactly how it would work out. Or in some cases, you'd have two best friends and they would literally sit down and say, dude, you want to raise a, Do you want to raise a baby together? Do you want to have a baby together? And it sounds and, you know, right now there's there are people who are like trying to shame a guy, shame men for that. Like, oh, you two guys are so you get two guys are a bunch of this and that. And then, you know, you know, leap forward when it becomes a normality and it becomes a norm. It comes to normality where, you know, guys basically turn to one another and say, like, listen, bro, I think you're the one. You know, I want to have a kid with you. And they're going to sit down and talk about it and really go through it, whether, you know, the pros and the cons. And they're going to like, you know, because this is how men operate, you know. And the irony is that there's going to be a lot more because there's going to be a lot more consideration. There's going to be a lot more consideration instead of like just like saying, OK, well, uh, you know what? You know, sh sh should we just go and do this? No, there's going to have to be counseling. Are you ready to have a kid? Stuff that doesn't happen when people have kids, you know, the, you know, the, the traditionally with a man and a woman. There's going to have to be things. There's going to be things in place. Right. Custody, all of this stuff. And guys are going to work this stuff out amongst themselves. And it's going to be actually extremely beneficial for the kid because they're going to have two dads instead of instead of a dad and a mom. And basically, when one dad isn't around, the other dad is there. And these kids are going to grow up in a very, you know, well-structured family. We already know that after the age of seven, children do better with their fathers. You know, because while there's the issue of nurturing that comes up. After the age. After the age of seven, children do better with their fathers. And research has found that children that are raised by single fathers do as well in life as children that are raised by both a mother and a father. Now, if they're raised by two fathers, they're going to get so much support, so much love, but and so much structure that you're going to have incredible human beings. And the intelligence is going to be substantial. It truly is phenomenal. And women will do everything and anything to stop this, this reality. I would go as far as saying that something like this happening where men can have children without women would literally, it would literally be almost, 
as monumental as you know a shift in 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 the shift shift in the world like uh like like the advent of free electricity and i i, I can't say i don't know if it would be as monumental as that but it would be quite monumental i mean think about it men being freed from the need to have a woman to have a baby entirely where men do not have to deal with a woman whatsoever to have a child they can have their children amongst themselves entirely with other men and raise them with other men it completely changes society and what does it do with women well it leaves women in a very hard place because for one thing it become recreational use only i mean even internationally it would be something else because if you can have a if you can have a kid with your bro with a guy in a, in, in western society now that becomes potentially even more appealing than going overseas and having a child with a woman overseas because the laws are because the laws if you have a, if you have a child with another guy that's when the laws will actually work correctly because you're dealing with two men so you're both on an equal playing field versus when you're dealing with a woman and then family court is completely geared towards women but if you're dealing with two men then family court is going to work right it's going to use reason and logic So a new structure will emerge. An entirely new structure will emerge of men, of men choosing to like just basically go their own way, walk away from society, walk away from Western women, choosing to live their lives and enjoy their peace. And it's much easier to get along with a guy than it is a woman. It is much easier for men to get along with other men. This is it. And, you know, of course, of course, women will blame everyone. And, of course, the number one people that they're going to blame are going to be men. And as I said it before, women that cannot face, cannot face accountability for the choices that they've made and decisions that they've made, many of them are going to delete. But there's no one that's going to come and express sympathy or empathy or any of that. It's going to be very cold. The world for women is going to become, and West, specifically in Western society, Western society is going to become a very cold place for women, an extremely dark place. And the thing is that they're going to experience many of the same things that men have experienced. They're going to start to experience a lot of these hardships because men aren't coming to rescue them. Men aren't coming to save them. The kindness that they once took for granted, it's going to disappear. Women taking advantage of men for free for 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 dinner and drinks and all that stuff. You're not going to have any men buying women drinks anymore. If guys go out to to these social events, they're going to socialize with other men, enjoy the music, enjoy the atmosphere, but they're not there for the women. And then women are going to say, "Well, if you're if you're not here for us, then why are you here?" I came here for the music. I came here to hear the band play. I came here for the lights. I came here to have not have a drink and get out. I didn't come here for you. You know, me and my buddies, we're just here to chill. You know, we're not here for you. Go find a Chad, go find a Tyrone, go find a Pookie, Ray Ray, Quan, or Enrique, but leave us alone. We don't want to have anything to do with you. And you're really harassing us right now. All right. And please watch your hand because the bouncer is over there. And I will let them know that you touched me inappropriately because I don't appreciate that. And you're really disrupting my evening. You're really disrupting our evening. That's really what's, where it's coming from. And women are going to be completely shocked when they can no longer find guys that are willing to invest in them. Because really, buying a woman a drink is an investment. You have these women out here saying that guys need to spend $300 on a meal, take them to a night, because they need to take them on a really nice date. You know, there's no TGIF or... or um. Or or what do you call or what do you call it the the, the garden that what's the name of that garden place you know Olive Garden guys Olive let me tell you all something can you imagine a woman telling you like oh yeah you you can't take me to Olive Garden guys this is this is the reason this is one of the this is one of the reasons why it's only going to get a lot worse because guys are saying are you crazy 
I'm not spending $300 on you. And why would I? I don't even want to go out with you in the first place. Your behavior is absolutely atrocious. The way you treat people is absolutely atrocious. But guys are going to say this to them. Guys are not even going to communicate with them anymore. When you watch fit, the Fresh and Fit podcast and you see Myron trying to explain, them, explain things to these three or fours and they can't comprehend them, guys – it's only going to get much, much worse because you're gonna have you're gonna have these women out here that can't that are, they're not gonna get explanations anymore. They're not gonna be guys explaining anything to them. They're just gonna sit around wondering why why the guys won't deal with them, why men don't want to speak to them. All right, and the women that and like you're gonna see people like Just Pearly things capitalizing on it. All right, mocking them like look at Just Pearly thing really now has a Just Pearly thing actually has a shirt coming out right now. That's that basically reads women shouldn't vote. All she's doing is mocking women. Let's make that very, very clear. Like just pearly thing. It's like she's taking it to the next level. She's saying downright borderline, downright borderline misogynistic things. Like literally just pearly things is literally almost pushing misogyny at this point. And she's and she's she's making her money. She's making tons and tons of money off it. And she has no empathy, no sympathy. She's there's something a little off with that chick. And she has no empathy or sympathy for women around her, which is kind of the way that women are with men. Women have no sympathy or empathy towards men. And she's just delivering that towards women. And you're going to see a lot of women who do the exact same thing. And there are women out there who did not allow the feminist seed to nurture and grow inside of them. And they did talk about what was happening in Western society. And they did say that women are going to face the consequences for it. And these women aren't going to, they're not going to help them. They're not going to help these women. They're not going to rescue them and say, sister, I, you know, I used to have a friend and some of you guys know who, who I'm talking about. And she would always say, she does not know why they say women actually care about one another. Women don't actually care about one another. And while women can have lots of friends, they don't have any good friends. And something I've learned, someone that a friend taught me, a woman can have lots of female friends, but they have no good friends. And sometimes women say that they don't have any friends at all. Right. And it's like they don't have any friends at all. You can look at their phone. They have tons of female females in there that they go out, they grab drinks with, that they regularly speak to, that they have close bonds, that they predominantly you, you would assume they had close bonds to. But in reality, they have no close bonds to them. They don't even consider these other women actual friends. They'll say, I don't have any friends. And you're like, you have no friends. That's correct. I have no friends. So all of these women, even women that you spend time with, even women that you hang out with and and that 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 that, that even have, that you help and they may have helped you, you don't consider them actual friends. Nope. That's how women are. Guys, this is the reality that women have created for themselves, and they're going to have to live with the consequences of it. And there's no one coming to rescue them. There is no help. There is no aid. There is nothing. None of it. And there will be no sympathy. I don't have sympathy. I don't have sympathy. I don't have empathy for what's happening here. And most men don't anymore. And, and one of the, the, the greatest shocks to women what that's happening right now is the fact that men are going silent. And they're no longer approaching. They're no longer speaking. They're no longer making contact. They're not coming within proximity. And if they do, if for the guys that are even that are even willing to 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 go on a date with them and spend time with them these guys aren't touching them they're not making the first move they're extremely careful and the women are like you're acting like little princesses you're the ones that are supposed to be doing these things you're supposed to be courting me you're supposed to be making the first move you're supposed to be doing this stuff and 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 you know and they're attacking they're going after them on social media and they think that this is this is how it's going to it's going to sh shame they're going to shame men into being more assertive after being after being to torn down and told that their masculinity is toxic and that and that uh even yes me even you know it no means no and even yes means no and even yes can mean no then so basically you know and basically women can withdraw consent day you know hours days weeks years even decades after they consented why would any man in their right mind get involved in this? And the funny thing is, even if you prove that it was a lie, there are always going to be women that say that it wasn't, that it was still, that it was true. Even though, even if it's proven that a woman lied, there are always going to be women, lots of them, especially the feminists who say that it was, that, that, uh, that it was true. 
a man will never get his reputation back. Because once a man's reputation has been destroyed, it it will never be what it was what it was once. A man never truly gets his reputation back because a stigma will always remain on him. That's how it is in the military, for example. If a man is accused of something in the military, even if he is cleared, whenever a promotion comes up, he will always be passed over for it. They will always pass him over for, for like a for a big promotion. They will always pass him over for it. All right? Because that stigma will stay there. Even if he has been completely cleared of any wrongdoing, he will always be passed over. Because that stigma is there. The damage is always done and women don't care and they will never take accountability. And the only way we can ever hold women accountable is by throwing everything they have done at their feet and walking away and leaving them there to deal with it. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments regarding what's happening here right now. Why women must be blamed for the destruction of men and society. You know my thoughts. I want to hear yours. So let's hear them in the comments. All right. Get to the comments. Let's talk about it. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away. And cheers.